Yep, we're recording. Confirm, can confirm. Recording is happening. It begins in 3, 2, 1. When I'm not busy making faces at the humans, I'm listening to The Instance Alliance Pigs. <laughs> The World of Warcraft podcast, so you don't have to. This is the instance. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Instance, episode 548. It is uh, February 8th, 2019. I'm Scott Johnson, Garrett Wine Zerple. How's it going? What's going on, buddy? Oh, it's uh, I'm zerpling. Zerpling it up, keeping the zerpling in the purple, as the kids say. Uh, it's me and Garrett, everybody. Hi, how is everybody? What's going on? No it's Europeans the, uh, today. The, it's the Scott and Garrett hour. That's or right. Ninety minutes, or we'll see how it goes. I yeah, guess. Yeah, probably. Yeah, who knows? But uh, just sit down, relax. There's no Europeans today. If that's a thing you're afraid of, if you're not afraid of that, and it's something you look forward to. I don't know what, what to tell you. Be afraid you? of the Europeans? I don't know. They're fine. They're okay, but they're so sneaky. You never know what's going on with the Europeans. They might have a little something up their sleeves. Hmm. Like Patrick flying from France to Helsinki. What's that about? Hmm. Sounds like international spy shit to me. Hmm. Uh, and then I don't know where where Terpster is. He's very busy. Busy boy. Uh, Sylvanas, Sylvanas is going to call Patrick a traitor <laughs> and arrest him. Yeah, that'd be fine. I'd be all right with that. I would love to go bail. If there's anyone I would like to bail out of jail, it's Patrick in his grumpy state. Because I love grumpy Patrick. Grumpy <laughs> Patrick is the kind of Patrick that like, says to me, oh, I haven't, I haven't touched a cigarette in three years, but I'm going to smoke one tonight because I'm French and I'm angry. There's just something about him. I just want to go deal with that. <laughs> He's harmless. He's not going to hurt a flea. But grumpy Patrick is a great Patrick. If he hears this, which he probably won't, but if he does... We love you, buddy, and we miss you. Uh, tweet me something grumpy. Yeah, do that. Talk uh, grumpy to me, Patrick. Nah. <laughs> Talk grumpy to me. That's the old, the old favorite. Um, hey, we're here. Now, before we get going, we got a lot to talk about, a bunch of stuff here and there. Uh, I want to ask Garrett a very important question that has been burning a small but recognizable hole in my brain all week. Uh, a little curiosity hole. Okay. <laughs> That's what they called me that in high school, curiosity hole. Anyway. Ah, good old, good old curiosity <laughs> hole Johnson. Yeah. I played bass for them. They were great. Anyway. It's a great, great ska band. They were amazing. It's too bad ska fell out of favor or they might still be here. Whatever. It's still alive and well in Florida. It's anyway, a, what is your question? It's alive and well <laughs> with you in Florida because I think you're a big, you've never turned your head away from the ska revolution. Oh, yeah. We also have less than Jake locally keeping it alive and well. That's true. All right. So here's my, here's my curiosity hole question. Uh, I've been hearing a bunch of chatter and rumblings about you playing some weird chess thing. Oh, for Christ's sake. Yeah. So yeah. I need to know what the hell that is because I really don't know. And I haven't had the time to kind of go find the proper name, really dig up what it is, look up your it's tweets it. and find out. So what the hell is this thing and what are you doing with it? It is a uh, Dota 2 mod, like a custom map. Okay. Uh, you know, you, you, you're a fan of the custom maps, Scott. I love the uh, custom you know, maps. Big fan. Back in the day, we thought it was going to be the next big thing in StarCraft 2, and mm -hmm. they were going to let people make things and make money from it and, you know, maybe take a page out of Steam's book, but uh, none of that came to pass. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Dota 2 has custom maps, much like StarCraft 2, and there is a, there's a game now that all the all the Hearthstone pros are playing, Scott. It's all the rage right now. It's what? called Auto Chess. Why the Hearthstone pros? That's an odd crossover, it sounds like um, to me. So it's it's basically a card game. Even though you're you're selecting 3D Dota heroes and putting them on a, a grid-based map and and they kind of go at each other almost tower defense style. Mm. Um, but it's it's like a limited card game. You're 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 drafting your heroes from a limited pool. Uh, against seven other players so there's eight players total and uh it's it's kind of like sitting down and doing a magic draft but with dota heroes okay and uh there's synergies and 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 different damage types and counters and and defenses and all that kind of stuff this fascinates me turn-based then it's not a real-time affair like they're all um, standing there yeah, more more or less yeah okay. yeah you, it, it kind of goes in rounds and and it keeps pit, pitting you against 
of one of the other seven opponents uh, that's in the game with you. And you can look at the other boards because there's like a mini map Dota style in the bottom left hand corner. You can look at their boards as well and you can see what they're drafting. And then you can be like, oh, mm, oh, they they didn't. There's not a lot of people taking goblins. I can go. I can I can draft for goblins and get them all. Yeah. Uh, and this is really fun metagame of trying to like read the board and then what everyone else is drafting it. To me, it, it scratches the uh, the itch that Hearthstone really never hit for me, which yeah. is a, a solid limited format. I mean, they have arena. I don't like it very much. Yeah, always uh, me as well. I wish they had more of that, uh, or, or, or a more solid sort of broad-based central game element in in Hearthstone that played more like that. I would I would play it more straight up. Would just play it more. Uh, right now, I think it's actually difficult for new players to even want to go near it, and for veteran players, it sounds like it's not enough. So mm. uh, that'd be great. But here's the thing. Yeah. Uh, I think that's great. I also think it's a little bit weird. And here's what I want to ask you. Do you feel like you are on the ground floor of the next big, like this could be a big genre thing and then it'll pop out on its own before you know it. Somebody should have invested in somebody because they made it huge with this weird slow chess thing or whatever you called it, auto chess thing. You, uh, you, I, I will put it this way. If I had uh, be like a million dollars to throw at some developers, I would be working on a non-janky version of this as soon as I possibly could. Oh my gosh, listen to that endorsement. That's insane. Okay, all right. It, it's it's fun. It's fun, but it's a Dota 2 map, and it's real janky. There's weird bugs, and uh, like this, you only have 30 seconds to set your board up each round, so... Uh, there's an immense amount of APM in those 30 seconds of like buying your heroes, moving things around the board. Cause you, you can't box select and move everyone. You have to move each unit individually. And by the late game, you can have up to 10 units on the board and yeah. you can move them around for positioning. It, it's bananas. I, I get it. it. It really annoyed me the first time I looked at it. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, if I could promote, um, Kyle and I's YouTube finally got a mm. custom URL. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. You can go to youtube.com slash Garrett and Kyle now. Oh, nice. YouTube.com slash Garrett and Kyle, two R's and two T's in the spelling of Garrett. And you guys flip and, houses. Uh, You're a gay couple in Texas. You flip houses and you know, that's yeah. the show. Okay, great. <laughs> I would be very into that uh, that show minus the, the, the gay marriage because I very much love my wife. Um, but... Uh, anyways, what I was trying to say is our most recent video is like a, basically a, a what the hell is auto chess breakdown. Um, yeah. So if you want to see it with some visual aids, we, we've got that up. But I have continued playing it. Um, I, I, at first, I was kind of annoyed by like the 30 second rounds. But now I've realized because a, a game can take you 40 minutes, Scott. If, if, if the setup took longer than 30 seconds, this would go on forever. Yeah, it'd be days of a game. Well, I think that's cool. You'll be uh, I, I just wonder if it's like I always look for these things now, like uh, when I saw the Team Fortress mod in Quake 1, did I really know what it would become? No, I didn't. I just thought, oh, it's a cool thing somebody did. Or when somebody introduced Capture the Flag to that same game, I was like, whoa, that's cool, but I doubt that'll go anywhere. No, it became like a, a permanent game type forever and always. Same thing with uh, the Arma mod originally that did the first kind of Battle Royale uh, scenario. Look how that blew up. Dota and League of Legends. Like, if you were on the ground floor when uh, uh, Ghost Toad or whatever his name was, I don't remember his name, but the original one of the original Dota people who were working on a little mod for Warcraft 3, even Blizzard didn't see it coming. And blah, it just explodes into this huge, huge thing. So maybe, just maybe, one day, in hushed and hallowed reverent tones, we'll be whispering the name of Garrett Weinzerpel when it comes to, uh, you know, your, your beginnings as a, as a future developer of a video game that took over the world. <laughs> I find it unlikely, but go check it out. It's free. You can download Dota 2, install the, the custom app, and uh, go play it. Nice. Scott, I would love I would love to take through oh, some I, auto chess. I would that, play that it. could be fun. I'd try it. I have no idea what to expect, so I'd go in there. I, I, I just know I can hear the Scott yelling now as that 30 seconds count <laughs> counts down, and you realize that there's two more units you could have fielded for that particular skirmish, and you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. I can hear it now. Well, I can he also hear it. What else I can hear is this uh, little cool transition point that you just made so easy. All right, check this out. We're going to talk about World of Warcraft, which I... Okay, I have played two video games this week in, ex pretty exclusively. Um, I usually kind of go all over the map. Well, that's not true. I picked up a sale on a space game that I really like, but that was more of a side thing. The two big games I've been playing this week are World of Warcraft. You might have heard of it. And... Uh, uh, what was the other game? <laughs> oh, an Apex Legends. Worst name in the history of video games. But it's all anybody's talking about. You should probably go try it, everybody. It's pretty good and has a terrible name, but it's good. Anyway, uh, as a result, it's been kind of nice because that was like my sort of 
scratch my PvP itch during the week. Um, and uh, while I wasn't doing that, I was playing WoW. I was uh, knocking out... I don't know what got under my, my... Sometimes you get like real obsessive in that game. And instead of going, well, I should go to this particular faction's uh, stuff, emissary stuff today so I can try to get this gear upgrade or... I need rep with this thing, so I'll go just grind those world quests and do other things that contribute to that particular um, rep. Instead, I got all ACD, ACD, OCD. ACD is not it. OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder. ACD is uh, is is three quarters of ACDC. Yeah, that's that's barely. It's not quite a full current connection in electricity, and it's also the band minus. Well, I shouldn't say that's kind of mean because well, the one the ACDC one guy is also a five piece, aren't they? Uh, yeah, are they? Well, no, they're not now. A bassist, a drummer, and a solo singer. The, yes. the one brother, not the one that dresses up like a schoolboy, but the other one, I can't <laughs> think of his name. He dropped out, I guess. He got early Alzheimer's or something. It's kind of bad. Anyway. Ah, oh, man. So now I brought and up that Brian sad Johnson's thing. Johnson's is gone. And, oh, man. ACDC makes me sad. What a great band, though, of all time. Is there a better rock band ever? No. Name one. Name a better rock band than ACDC. You can't do it. I mean, it's, it's, it's opinion, right? I'm sure some people would fight you on Led Zeppelin. Uh... <laughs> uh, ACDC ben still Halen. wins like straight up Maybe. rock and roll you gotta go you gotta go ACDC and I love those other bands I was a big Van Halen freak for a long time but Van Halen lost their freaking way ACDC really never veered off the road they always kept it together even their recent stuff still really good yeah Malcolm Young has dementia that's what it is that's sad anyway uh, I'm not gonna argue you uh, I really enjoy ACDC so you're not gonna find a, a defense here Garrett you shook me all night long alright check this out uh, <laughs> I don't know what that connotates. Let's move on. Okay, so uh, yeah, playing the World of Warcraft there, and I just start. I got really compulsive and focused on doing every single world quest everywhere. That it's, happened to me last week. I fell off a little bit this week, and that's because this week I got obsessive compulsive about World of Warcraft PvP, which I haven't played in a while. Oh, give me the what was the entry point for that? How come you were? Uh, I realized that since my Demon Hunter is new to this expansion, I have essentially no transmog, yeah. and there are some sweet looking Legion era PvP armor sets that you can pick up. And so I was going and farming me some Marks of Honor and found myself having a really good time while I was doing it. Did you successfully acquire said items? Or are you still cranking at it or what's the deal? Uh no I've uh, I've got it and matter of fact I've got a lot of extra marks of honor now so I'm, I'm deciding what other PvP set I want but I've got my nice torn uh, leggings as if my uh, my female blood elf demon hunter was a big fan of like emo bands in the mid two thousands so <laughs> well that's perfect go to hot topic get what you need so here's the question are you having fun to the point that you're um winning fights like how like this is my problem with pvp and it always has been i'm really bad at it in wow in particular because it was never a third person shooter it was never a shooter at all like that kind of skill doesn't matter it's a different kind of skill set that i just never really it never glommed on for me more of a pve guy but i always had fun especially with friends you go in there and you tool around and you have a really good time in pvp but i always felt just just bad at it and it's okay i've come to grips with it i don't you know it doesn't keep me up at night or anything but do you feel like you're accomplishing stuff or are you just getting the end of the matches and going okay well at least i got my marks of honor moving on to the next one like where, 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 I'm, I'm just curious where your head goes when you pvp in the game it i mean like any other pvp game it it it, it ebbs and flows right uh, i mean I, I i had a horrible week in heroes of the storm does that mean i'm down on heroes of the storm overall no no, I mean, it's, it, it happens. The, yeah. the week before, I was on a seven-game winning streak. Yeah. So uh, it kind of it kind of it, it ebbs and flows. And this week, I had a great time in PvP. I've certainly had a, a couple rough games, but overall, I, I really enjoy it. Um, I also find it depends on the class I'm playing, the spec I'm playing, and the battleground that I get. Yeah. You know, back when I used to tank all the time, I wasn't the biggest fan of, of PvP unless I was on, like, a flag-running map. Um, but now that I'm running in there as a Havoc Demon Hunter, I'm pretty much having fun in every battleground I end up on because I feel like a righteous badass. Oh, interesting. Havoc in there, eh? Never, uh, what's the other one? I forget the other one. Vengeance. Vengeance, never vengeance? Mm, no, not at the moment. Not I mean, for you anyway? Not you interested? Know, the, honestly, I was going to say, if I had to run the flag, I mean, the survivability in Vengeance would be good, but, I mean, you can dash like a madman in havoc that's you true want to run the flag too so. yeah you can kind of make up for it that's true yeah it is what it is but um yeah it's uh i was i haven't 
I PvP'd a lot in the towards the end of BC and pretty much all throughout Wrath, and really haven't touched it much since. And well, we were spoiled we in Wrath, a- right? Because because Wintergrass was pretty special, and I don't feel like we ever got there again. Uh, uh, well, we are getting the Wintergrass again, which I'm really excited for. Well, that's true, but but coming, up till up till now, it's been just kind of I mean a- attempts to bring back that glory or to iterate on it have I I know, I wouldn't say fallen flat, but it haven't been you know, received in as strong of a way. Maybe it's hard with this game to do that. I don't know. But I enjoy PvP once in a while. I just feel bad at it. What I need to define here is when you say it ebbs and flows, just for clarification for those out there, this is a this is more of a larger topic, a more esoteric discussion. If something ebbs, that's bad, means it slows, and it's not in the game context, it means you're losing. If it flows, you're winning, right? Is that what we're trying to say? Sure. Sure. Because <laughs> yes, normally but... you'd say ebbs and flows, you'd say it with like the ocean. Like, oh, well, right now it's ebbing, meaning it's not, the tide isn't out. But then when it's flowing, the tide is out, right? It, uh, well, let's go with the roller coaster. It has its ups, <laughs> it has its downs. All I'm right. having a good time okay. overall. All right. Overall, I'm really enjoying the WoW PvP right now. Uh, I forgot how much fun it could be. You know, all, all it takes, man, all it takes is a close Arathi Basin. And you're just like, oh, that's right. This still works. Yeah, it's still fun. I like it too. I just don't really bad at it. I don't feel like I contribute to anybody winning anything. So I'm ready. Um, I'm ready for that facelift on Arathi, by the way. Oh yeah, I can't, I can't wait. That's coming too. Needs it bad. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, there's that was my first question. Uh, second thing to tell you guys about is guess what? Somebody finally uh, uh, beat Jaina. Oh, I don't know how many people know that Jaina is the big boss in the first uh, in this raid. I, I would um, assume most most folks that tune in to a World of Warcraft podcast uh, are at least partially aware that yeah. uh jaina is a boss i always like to, i always like to hint around that something's a spoiler because i know that garrett is going to stick it to the spoiler people because you don't like yeah, it's, you, it's, it's, it's a wow show we talk about wow it's what we well, do right I, for me my line is more or less drawn at uh, live game <laughs> it's drawn at live game is it in the live game let's talk then about it's, it then it's on discussion. ptr yeah Okay, we don't we don't necessarily need to discuss it. Um, if it's story points, if it's like, hey, this item is coming in PTR, I don't I don't see anything wrong with mentioning that because I think I a, I think I'm with you. I think that makes total yeah. sense. Um, chat room says, is the boss for Jane is is Jane of the boss on both sides? I don't know. Is she? Is she? Okay, so yeah, there are folks who aren't aren't fully aware of what's going on in the Zara lore, and it, yes, yes, uh, you everyone gets to fight all the bosses, but uh, at a certain point. You, whatever faction you're on, you technically swap to the other faction. They do like a caverns of time type thing where they turn you into the alliance if you're horde, and they turn you into the horde if you're alliance for a certain section of the raid. Yeah. Um, it's it, the, the way they they get around it is it's like uh, uh, someone is telling you what happened. Yeah, they're the telling you the story. Bosses. Oh, I hate those usually, but I like it in this context. I think it works because this is a great like, way for us to do that. I yeah, I, I mean, I, I gotta say, I think Bizarre Lore is one of the, uh, you know, I I still haven't found myself a ra- uh, proper raid home yet, so I've been LFRing it, but uh, I, I think it is one of the coolest ideas for a raid ever, and I like the execution. Um, I know some folks are like, oh, it's a cop-out, you know, they just make you swap factions so that they didn't have to, you know, they didn't have to make extra bosses, but I wouldn't want to miss out on boss fights. Right, um, right. I, I wouldn't want... <laughs> selfish i don't want like truly unique bosses for each faction because i want to fight all the bosses well this would be like if i mean war mode is a great uh, uh, way to kind of shake things up but it would be like if they never let us go over to the other factions uh land like if you could never come to troll land and you were a human cult or otherwise that would suck you like you want to see all that content I don't want them walling that off. I understand them walling it off into, to some degree. Like you, you work your way through the war campaign to kind of unlock things or get over there and see things and, and all of that. But ultimately the goal is they make a ton of content. They don't want some percentage, large percentage of the player base never to see it. And I think the raid is consistent with that. So I don't find this weird at all. I don't find it like a cop out. Like they made a really cool bunch of encounters. Are you telling me you would like, let's say it's 50-50. I know it isn't, but whatever the dividing line between Alliance and Horde is, do you really want 50% of your, your player base not be, to be able to see it? And their only other way to see it is to go level another tune and go through all that it takes to get to that end content and do it just to see it? Like, Blizzard's not going to do that. Like, that was never on the table, guys. Like, they just can't do it. And I understand it's, like, mysterious. Like, I get the idea of why somebody would be into the idea that, 
the horde never really sees what the alliance is doing and they never really see what we're doing but damn it this is an mmo with like a lot of invested time and effort in content and they don't want to just toss it uh by the wayside for half the player base so my, i think my point is made uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope it's it good is. stuff. Anyway. Stuff is uh, our lore. Great yeah, job. Yeah, good job, Method. You took down a uh, uh, mythic Jaina. Oh, oh yeah, that was the news point we didn't yeah. even mention yet. Yeah, so so Method got the world first and the world second on killing mythic Jaina. Yeah, nice job. Two times in a row. I think Method might be your uh, might be the team to back at the moment. It, it's it's hilarious. It was it was two days in a row because they they got the first kill right before the E reset and then they went in the next day full cleared and, and nabbed a second kill. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Uh mad respect for those guys. Good job. And uh for those who like all the headlines say Method Method gets first Jaina kill. She she's not dead. Are you kidding? It's Jaina. It's Jaina Proudmore. Nobody kills Jaina Proudmore. So calm yourselves it's, it's, down. It's, a, it's the terminology we use for beating a boss. Right. So you can just if say you said, take, take Jaina if down. If you said uh, Rastakhan kill, that is uh, both. It's a term for for defeating a boss, and also Rastakhan's dead, everybody. Yeah, he's dead. We're a WoW show. He we did. talk about what's happening in WoW. It's on the public server. He dead. He's, de- <laughs> he's dead. Uh, where do you think they put his body? Where would you put it? There's probably a, a player. Do, uh, do they just ghost off? I forget. What do they do? Well, there's a, there's a cut scene where he's like chilling on an altar with Talanji, and Sylvanas comes in and is, is being a jerk. And Do they, be- do they burn so it? Do they burn him? They probably. Burn I believe him. we would just leave. I don't think we've seen like the proper like burial of of Rastakhan. I don't know if it's going to happen off screen or not. Who knows? Well, here I'll describe for the people at home the actual death. He he uh, he asks his son to help him take off this mask. He takes it off, and then he's like almost like a little harmonica in his face. It's really weird, and he's all pale in the head. Doesn't look like a normal troll at all. And then <laughs> and then he then he just kind of dies, and then and then they burn him. While the, while the, if, <laughs> tell, let me look upon you with Sunday, my, my you were right. <laughs> with my own eyes all right with my own eyes fantastic oh, uh, oh, that's terrible it is terrible oh by the way i should say this to the chat room because somebody just did it if you guys want to submit titles for today's show we might select from the list i forget, always forget to tell this audience to do that i do it on tms every day and we get hundreds of titles and it's fun and people can vote you just go to frogpants or no, sorry, frogpants.showbot.tv, frogpants.showbot.tv, and submit a title. And you can also vote on others you like. You can vote once for each uh, for any line item. And at the end of the show, we'll just we'll pick one of your titles. How about that? Maybe I'm not saying I will. Like if you put uh, "Garage had uh, chlamydia" as a title, I'm probably not going to pick it. <laughs> I don't know. I I think that's a good show title. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, uh, I'm going to pronounce this Jammer Gator Man says the show title should be Ghost Off. Oh, Ghost Off's not bad. All right, mm-hmm. we'll submit it. See, you go. So what you do is you, yeah. do, uh, you do a uh, uh, exclamation point and an S and then a space and then you type the name of the title and it will submit it as a title and the bot will take care of the rest. So uh, good Scott, luck to you. Uh, yeah. As an old school instance fan, I, I have to know, do you... Still have access to the Hunter Talk bumper for this next bit? Oh my lord, maybe. It's on it. So this was a couple of computers ago, <laughs> and I don't remember if all this data got moved. But let me see. So <laughs> Hunter Talk. Uh, oh come on, we gotta have it. Shut up, Evan! No, 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 no. That's <laughs> that's really not it. Hold on. <laughs> I got to have this, right? This should be just handy. Okay, Hunter Talk. Uh, oh, please have it. Do I have it? I'll bet it's on that other system. I've got a whole hard drive. I just need to move over. Yeah, it's not here. Damn it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, uh, this is great radio, by the way. The The people listening I'm just I'm so sorry that I pulled the e-brake no, on no, no. this podcast. I was speeding along at a decent pace. Don't feel bad. Um, I know I've... Why is that not in here? Dildo Baggins. But myself did not win because Xerxes thought he was going to be a Dildo Baggins. <laughs> what? <laughs> I got stuff I didn't know I had. How about it that? Like a TMS call or yeah. something. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I don't have it, but Hunter Talk. Here, there you go. I did a t- temporary one. Hunters can ride <laughs> Haiti in uh, 8.1.5 and uh, kill Col- Tyran and Zandalari troll starting hunter pets. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But Haiti, remember Hattie? Haiti, have you say it? Is it Haiti? Hattie? I've I always said Hattie. Probably Hattie. Uh, our, little double, our little double pet during Legion, 
Uh, all you hunters know you miss him now because when your when your artifact went away, poof, that went that there went Hattie. A bunch of people did some cool like uh, art about it. Uh, the sad moment where you had to kind of leave this pet who had been with you for an entire expansion, and now he's just not there anymore. And I'll tell you what, you can go out and find some exotics and some other pets out there, tame them that kind of look like him, but they're not the same. It just doesn't feel right. It's like having a clone of your former pet. It's just not the same. So. Uh, you can not only is he coming back, but he's coming back in rideable mount form, which is pretty rad. Yeah, I believe you need a toy for this. It's going to be like a hottie vendor, Hattie, 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 Hattie. Hattie sounds like I'm 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 making reference to the attractiveness of this uh, of this wolf. Yeah, never um, trust a hottie vendor. I just would <laughs> stay away from that. It's more of a pimp, really. Anyway, yeah, but there's a yeah, there's gonna be a vendor that sells a bunch of, of uh, Hattie toys, and one of them will make Hattie grow larger and be rideable. Yeah, which is awesome. Now, somebody in the chat just says, "Is this hunter only?" I don't know. Is it? Can anybody do it? I mean, you it should be because no other, no one else has pets. Yeah, good point. I mean, but do I really want? Do I want I'm everybody? Say I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure certain this is hunter only. It better be hunter only, right? Because if it's ever if, if everyone gets a chance to get Hattie by paying or doing other some other thing, that would suck. You guys, we don't get any of your cool things. Nobody's like, uh, I don't know, what would I want? Uh, 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 the old janky vanilla warlock mount. <laughs> right, that piece of shit. That thing is terrible. I hate that old mount. <laughs> Did they redo it that? Looks, it really looks like butt now. I'm ready for an update on that. <laughs> oh, they haven't then. Okay, they haven't updated it. Not that I'm aware of. I've been are... playing my Alliance warlock a bit and... I'm still riding around on like a four poly horse. It feels like when you do uh, model redos, like the character redos, that it should be a priority to take class specific stuff that that is yours and always comes out like that. They should fix those. Like Pat, uh, who is it? The uh, did the did the um, oh geez, they're, they're, they're doing it slowly. I mean, we've like my Void Walker on my Warlock looks so much better now. Yeah. And I'm with Necronome in the chat room. I want to ride my warlock, my Void Lord. That'd be great. Oh, riding your Void Lord. Yeah, just jump up on his blueberry shoulders and just uh, float around. Here, chat. I'm going to show you how this works. Uh, exclamation point S. This will submit. Ride around on my... Who was it again you said? Riding on? R ride, ride around my Void Lord. Void Lord, that's it. See? And now it'll go... Oh, it's not. Is it not working? <laughs> what it's supposed to work? That's usually. Says. Yeah, it would be better is melting my blueberry. Oh, it su submitted his. It didn't do mine. All right. Well, whatever. Point well, is, we'll figure, it out. Uh, we'll figure it out. The point is, uh, yeah, I don't like it when they don't change that stuff. The same thing happens with um, uh, freaking de uh, not demon hunters. Um, uh, what's wrong with me, Arthas people? What are they called? Death knights. Death knights. Gosh dang it! <laughs> Ar Arthas people. Ugh. Who are you calling artist would, people? Wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't come out. Uh, uh, yeah, Death Knights. They uh, they do they still have the ugly little uh, uh, whatever they are coming out of the ground? Your little undead guys that just look like three polygons and a splash of paint. Um, no, I like their their models for that. It was a, that was a Lich King model. Yeah, Fine. The, yeah, they're just uh, the ghouls. Yeah, the ghouls. That's they got I mean. uh, they got like I don't even remember now. It's been a while since I played my Death Knight, but they had. They had ways to like customize the way their ghoul looked. Mm. All right, fine. TVZ got like it's, it's a It'd be school. nice to the ghouls. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll 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 see what's going on. Uh, all right. Well, there's that. So that's something you can do. Let's talk about the starting pets though for uh uh for those hunters. Uh, for uh, Kul Tirans and Zandalari. They're, yeah. they're if you're a hunter for Kul Tirans or Z Zandalari, we now will know what their starting pets will be, and it's a little cool. Yeah, or like well, how little? Like one's a bird. Someone's getting a bird, right? Let's see. Yeah, Kul Tirans are getting a falcon, and it's like a it's a unique model of a falcon. Oh, yeah, look at that. He's cool yep. looking. And uh, the Zandalari are getting a dire horn, which whatever you can go you can go tame them. What's cool about this is you get to skip having to go get an ancient tomb of Dinomancy to tame one. Oh yeah, right. Oh yeah, they're pretty. Eh, they look okay. That seems like a thing to do. I'm not really a fan yeah. of dinosaur models anymore. I feel like I'm kind of spent on that in the in the game in particular. I don't know why. Well, if you're if you're playing Horde, you've seen a lot of dinosaurs this expansion. Yeah, there's a lot. 
out there. I, uh, I, I think the Xandalari should start with full size devil sores. Oh, like boss size devil sores. What about the big green long neck dude that you can get for that has a uh, uh, like? I want to write. Here's the deal. Here's what I believe to be true, or maybe it is true. That is a mount. You can buy that mount for like three million gold, right? Like it's the, an obscene amount of gold I will never retain. But can you ride it? Can I walk? Can I drive around in it? Yeah, that's it's a mount. Oh, I always it's thought a, it was just you put it there and it stood there and then became a vendor for everybody. I didn't realize you could move on it. Oh, that's a it's a freaking mount, man. Five million? Shit. <laughs> why why else would you be spending five million gold if you couldn't ride this this long boy <laughs> around? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It wouldn't be worth this, it, would it? That's such a long back. It just, I knew it was going to be expensive to the point that I kind of just ignored it. And when I'd see someone setting one up, I'd see it in town. I'd just go, I'm not going near that thing. I'm going back I have to never it. been more envious of anything in my life, but I do not have the patience to play the auction house. I, I, I can't do it. I don't have the time. Every, every expansion, the start of every expansion, Scott, I'm like, mm-hmm. there's something. It's really expensive. I have to have it. This is going to be the expansion that I play the auction house. Yeah. And I spend about four days doing it. I make like 200,000 gold and then I just sit on it for the rest of the, ex- the expansion because I'm so I'm just I just don't have the I don't have the headspace for it. Well, the the mortal mistake that you and I made, well, I shouldn't say for I'll speak for myself here is that during Warlords I did not play the garrison hard enough because if you played the garrison hard enough uh you made so much gold it was ridiculous and you walked into legion with an incredible surplus that would have carried you not only through that expansion but well beyond it and you'd have the money now like i know people who made tens of millions in there and would just easily throw five on this brontosaurus without even thinking about it but i hated garrison so much and fell off as off of it so quick i never really made jack in there i mean i mean a little but never made nearly enough. So I'm kind of bummed. It feels like it's like my parents said, well, if you work hard now, later on, you won't have to as much. I feel like I didn't listen to my wow parents' advice and do the hard work in Garrison so that today I could have the mount I want. Instead, I got to buy like a $200 Ford Maverick or something, you know? <laughs> Frick. Get a probe, Scott. Yeah, get a probe. They explode when they get hit in the rear. I had a probe for three months my dad used to be a not card. a probe i'm thinking about pinto oh pintos, pintos yeah pintos exploded um i had a you remember the yugos you're probably too young for this i don't know no i remember the yugos, yugos. that was uh oh my god what movie was the yugo in was there a yugo a movie with the yugo in it it not throw mama from the train was it i don't know might have been i don't i don't remember well there's i took this okay so i was in high school my dad was a dealer a car dealer and he would drive to... Um, <laughs> Thank you for specifying what kind of <laughs> dealer he was. He was a hard heroin dealer. No, he would go to California, buy cars at auction, bring them back, and then sell them here to profit to dealerships. So he's more of like an independent little like contractor guy. And um, we would always get these cars from California. And oftentimes it was awesome. It was like, hey, Scott, for the week you can drive this 300ZX or you can drive this MR2 or these rad little sports cars or whatever it was oh, we were getting. Oh, man. I saw a mint MR2 the other day, oh. and I was reminded of how much I wanted one of those when I was in they high school. They were so cool, dude. The engine was right here behind your head, and it was just like this monster little sweet little thing. I broke the struts on it. But anyway, all that, forget <laughs> all that. My dad uh, usually had a cool car for me to drive. But then once in a while, fate would be ugly to me, and I asked this girl out on a date. She was taller than me. Um, this only matters because she just really intimidated me. She was like a model, beautiful tannest beautiful long leg oh my gosh i was just a teenager in love and she said yes and i thought oh my gosh i'm so excited i'm gonna get the best car dad has right now and i'm gonna take her out and we're gonna have a great date that weekend turns out everything else had sold but the yugo he just got oh yes so they had so to cram good. me in i know she was taller than me zoe it's weird She's. Uh, we crammed me in the front of this thing, her in, in the passenger seat. We both barely fit because I'm 6'4 or 6'3 then, So and she's taller than me. She's like 6'6". Six, six. I think she went on to be a model, actually. She was super nice and, you know, whatever. But we go out, and the whole time I'm going, this is the worst thing. This car sucks. And then about halfway to somewhere, I do a turn in an intersection, and the steering wheel pops off with both of us in the car. Just pops right off. <laughs> And it just went ee- and slammed into a curb, and we just kind of sat there and had to call. I don't remember what how we got out of it. I blocked it out. It what, sucked. what we just learned, everyone, is that Scott Johnson grew up in a John Hughes movie. <laughs> I did, dude. I he, totally he, did. He got the the model girl to go out with the nerdy kid and had to drive her around in a Yugo. I did. It off. was awful. And the music was, uh, uh, was, what music would that be? You know what it'd be? It'd be that yellow song that beer, bo, bo. They used in Ferris Bueller. <laughs> 
wow, and I'm wow. trying to make it through town. I got it, I got it. And for the next week, by the way, my dad had to he used a uh, tube vice grips on the on the side of this thing because the steering wheel was just stripped and ruined. And you would drive it with these two vice grips, you know, what do you call them? Uh, uh, I guess they're, what are they? Ha- um, what are vice grips called? Uh, they're called vice grips. I guess they're <laughs> called vice grips and they're just held on there. And, you, and so you drove it like this with these two hands. Like a bike? Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it's a bike with, with an accelerator. It sucked. Uh, and she, so never went, she never went out with me again. So By that. the way, I would, I would say that the proper song to play when driving a Yugo is uh, Hot Cross Buns. Oh, all right. <laughs> you know, that's, had I done that, song. if I'd have done that, it might have been better. <laughs> uh, all right well that's fantastic let's talk about some hot fixes here lots of little stuff yeah uh, lots, lots of little stuff but uh, i think the big thing here is that there's a you know a minor balance tweak to the uh second to last is our lore boss yeah that's good right i've heard complaints yeah yeah uh, stormwall blockade if it is uh, doing its job too well and and blocking your progress the uh the cast time of uh sea swell has been increased by three seconds, like the time in between it. Yeah, so you can um, react. And also the damage was, it saw a damage reduction. And this is both normal and raid finder uh, are, are tweaked. So that's live now. You can get in there. Yes. So people Which are, is funny because you, you can't even get to this fight yet in raid finder. So I, I find it amusing that they even notated that. You may remember from last week, you had uh, cheesed me a little bit because I was sitting at like 349 or 347 or something. And I couldn't get into the thing because it had to be 350. And my item level was suffering. So everybody's like, ah, just go knock out a couple of world quests and you'll get there, which was true. Um, and I did that and I got there and then I went and queued for it. And then someone came to my door and I went to talk to them. And two hours later I came downstairs and I had long missed the queue, obviously. And then I had other stuff to do. So as it turns out this week, it was mostly world quests and I didn't get to see the raid yet. So fantastic. I'm going to try to do it tonight. Uh, if I can, and I'll uh, I'll get in there. Just like you know, I'm gonna be like Method. World's first, world's last is what I'm aiming for. <laughs> I'll be the first to be last. Very excited. Hey, if you actually clear it this late in the week, I mean that's like world's first Friday clear because yeah, I, I waited a little too late this week. I got into a raid yesterday. And it was rough. Well, wow, really, it's like rough. Rough is in what? Like just rough as in a change to the freaking ads on the first boss you numb nuts mm. oh one of those deals okay that kind of rough <laughs> garrett's the first favorite boss rough. in raid finder switch to the ads yeah you know we've been playing this game long enough i feel like the switch to the ads thing should be built into us now you know yeah especially when they heal the boss mm-hmm. the problem is raid finder people like to just go and mow they don't want to They've always liked this. They like to just go and burn it down and not think about it. And and Blizzard's like, no, you do have to. You got to do some stuff. I, I just need to remember every Tuesday after Angry Chicken wraps up to go in and get my LFR out of the way. Yeah, that's the time to do it. Uh, all right. Well, we'll see how that continues to go. And if you want to see all the hot fixes, it's up on the uh, WoW side, of course. Uh, if you like Valentine's Day or if you say Valentine's, I don't judge you. It's fine. Do what you got to do. You can get back to your love rocket farming, which is what we called it in high school. I don't think it's as dirty now. So check it out. <laughs> love rocket farming. It's back. And uh, you can go do it. Don't You probably already have this. Don't you have this already? You I don't. That. I don't. I spent three years trying to farm it, and then I just was bored and never tried it again. Well, that's the problem, right? You just get bored with it. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to make it through, but it is a. Uh, it will now only drop from the heart-shaped box that players uh, level 110 or higher receive from defeating the Crown Chemical Company. Um, but it's not a guaranteed drop. So No, definitely not. Farm um, that a lot shit. Of, a lot of folks farm this on multiple heroes every week while loving in the air. Or sorry, every day, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um one love in the love is in the air is <laughs> love going in the air. <laughs> and uh it, the, the thing here is that in legion they added like a minimum level requirement to even be eligible for it to drop um so folks were asking on the forums hey it's new expansion is there is there a level requirement and it is 110 you have to be level 110 for there to even uh, have the extremely slight chance of finding this this mount in the first place. These low percentage RNG mounts in the history of the game, has there ever been one where you just pushed and pushed and pushed until you got it or got lucky and got it early? Like, do you have, because for me, the ones that are that hard to get, I always gave up. I was um, like, it's not worth it to me. So I just didn't do it. It wasn't necessarily a drop, but it was like a quest showing up and it was, it was the fox in Legion. Oh, that fox is cool. And I, I remember because jocelyn and i were playing together a lot and she really wanted the fox yeah 
and she still doesn't have it last i checked oh and i got it like in week three or four from the from the questing Ugh. and uh yeah I, I don't think she has forgiven me for that luck yet i did it for the or i tried for a while for the what was that called the tiger shoot it was part of a raid in bc um, bc tiger from a raid i have no idea not zandalari tiger it was like that though whatever it was chat will remember i went and basically what i wanted was a mountable henry because he looks just he looked just like the henry model but blown up big and you could ride him and Z uh, there you go Zul uh zulaman zulaman not zulian zulaman tiger i think it's got to be zulian i think because i'm, I'm googling tiger? it right now swift zulian just, that's it that's it yeah, Swift Zulian Tiger. That's ah, Zillian. yeah, yeah. It's a Night Saber model, but it's orange. And it's old. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is jank as hell. But at the time, that's the best we had. So I was super intent on getting it. I wanted a rideable Henry. I was all into that idea that, that I had lore behind it. I was going to be like, all right, well, when I'm not fighting with the little guy. I'm riding him. I, I had a little story about this and everything. I was, I was going all for it. And we, we grinded that thing over and over and over. We did it well into when it was not even that expansion anymore. And... It didn't matter. I never got it, and now I'm now I maybe I don't care now because it's an ugly ass model now, and they never updated it, so it's not that big a deal. But well, it's, it's still rare, and apparently it came back in six point one. I don't even remember how you got this thing. Do you remember how you farmed it? Uh, it was in a raid, and you had to go clear that. Oh, it came from the tiger boss of of ZG. Yeah. Okay. So you had to do that constant, or you know, as often as you could do it. And back then, I think you could only do it once a week. So that would have been uh, vanilla. Was it vanilla like, I guess or you B were farming B it in BC? I, be, I guess I was farming it in BC, but I, I think I was farming it well into Wrath <laughs> because I just wasn't ever getting it, and so I Makes kept sense. thinking it would get easier to get because I would level. You know, we were getting new expansions, and that content would get easier. It just almost was worse because you just tear through there. Nope, didn't get it. Tear through there. Nope, didn't get it. See you next week. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. I just never got it, so I gave up on doing that. So anytime one of these pops up, I just kind of go. <laughs> Nah, I'm all right. I'll fly. I'll fly that pig. How about that? I'll fly the pig. That'll be fine. I'll yeah. Pay, I'll pay cold hard cash for the pig. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's a thing. You can go do it if you want to. And uh, don't forget, there is the uh, Corin Dyer Brew and Headless Horseman later this year. So plenty of other chances to grind out your shite. Uh, and then finally, there, there is a bit of a spoiler happening on the PTR about yeah. Bane and Derek Proudmore. Yeah, so we're, we're not going to say what the spoiler is, but the information is all over the internet. So yeah. if this sounds interesting to you, go look it up. What? And I'll also probably talk a little bit about it on R2-T2 because I'm pretty flippant with uh, <laughs> with spoilers over there. Yeah, he doesn't care. He don't care about no spoilers. Um, but it is all over the place. You can't miss it. If you just look at Bane and Derek Proudmore on Google, there's 100... Videos, links, and everything else talking about late and breaking news on the PTR. And it's kind of a big deal. So if you would like to do that, you can learn how they ran off to uh, that beach place after Andy Dufresne broke out of prison. All right. Yeah, I, I, I can't believe that they got the license to the song Kokomo to put in this game <laughs> for that scene. It was, it was really, it, it's a strong decision. Still one of the best movies ever made. Maybe the best. All right. Well, that's that. Let's do this. Let's talk about what else is happening in and around Blizzard. No big corporate stuff at the moment, although Activision stock has slipped again. I don't doesn't necessarily say much about Blizzard, but uh, Fortnite cutting in everybody's bottom line. They're not the only ones. Every major publisher and game uh, related anything in this industry right now is feeling the sting of a monstrous success. And that success being Epic's uh, Fortnite, which is poking holes in everything. Although, uh, all, the, those, all those Apex Legends, which came out of literally nowhere. Out of nowhere. They didn't announce it anywhere early. Uh, a little bit got leaked a week early. That's it. It came out of nowhere. It's full featured, pretty fleshed out and polished. Uh, it's it's freaking Respawn, who made who originally made all those Call of Duty games that were you know changed the industry. So it's they're no small thing. EA needed a big hit. Boom, there it is. Uh, it's really good. I've played it. I like it a lot. I like it better than any other Battle Royale game out there that I've played. I hate Fortnite, so this is this is way more my speed. And uh, I will say this. That impact is nothing like... Like in the past, you could say, oh, what about MOBAs? Those were a big deal. They had a huge impact and still do. You're right, they do. But they're not as broad-based. Uh, you could say, WoW was this and it's heyday. But remember, WoW and it's heyday was 
you know, 15 million subscribers paying 15 a month, which is an enormous amount of money and a, and a success at, at any level. But that's just 15 million people. This game that just came out, what, four days ago or whatever, went from a million people first day, three million the last time I checked, and as of today, it's somewhere in the 12 to 15 million people are playing the game. And that's that's forgetting everybody who's already over there in the p potentially worldwide hundreds of millions playing Fortnite on many uh, devices and consoles and phones and everything everywhere else. Like, it's kind of bonkers that a, a game type could have this much of, a, of an impact. Like, this is so disruptive to the industry, and I'm fascinated by it. Just fascinated to watch it. I don't necessarily love it as a genre, but it's kind of here to stay. And everyone's like, oh, that fat will pass. No, it'll be like Deathmatch. It'll just kind of stick with us. Shooters will no, forever have it. I mean, look at, look at MOBAs. MOBAs are not uh, the, the king of the mountain at the moment. King of the hill, I guess, would be a better uh, term. But... It, it hasn't died off. League of Legends is still wildly popular. It's just not the top dog at this exact moment. Right. And you also have a company like Blizzard I don't think is good at pivoting on something like this the way other companies might be. And maybe it's because those other companies are more desperate to do this. Certainly Respawn and EA needed a hit. Their last game was fantastic but came out between other releases that drowned it out during the holiday season. But Titanfall 2 is amazing. That's an incredible game. It was the best of those three games but you it had a really hard time competing with big loudmouths like whatever that Call of Duty was that year and Battlefield that year. And yeah, so... I, I think EA, this is going to be... A, like, I'm just... It's going to be a good year for EA. I mean, Apex Legends has just come out and and, and set set the world on fire this week. Yeah. Um, and I have played it and I think it's just awesome. It's really good. And Anthem, I really like. It, it made some very odd decisions in uh some of the uh, like more like nit nitpicky areas of the game yeah um but uh, i could also see that game becoming a really good shoot and loot uh title in, in this whole space if they continue to kind of iterate upon it right i just my god that menu system is rough yeah it's it's pretty rough but it'll it will get there but here's the thing blizzard can't pivot like this i would love it if they came out and said hey by the way overwatch has a new mode and it's called like I always say, a hundred junk rats enter, one leaves, or whatever they call it, and they have this big thing, and they and they glom onto this. It's just not the way Blizzard works. And part of me is glad because I like them to think about it longer, tweak at it, build something really cool over time. But I'm not sure that is good for them anymore these days. I think s faster turnaround time would really help them. You know, being able to pivot and go, huge trend. We need a piece of it. We missed it on the mobas. Let's get it this time. In some ways, they did that with Overwatch. But that's a complicated story. Anyway, and now they're kind of getting beaten at their own game again. Ah, I don't know, man. It's all crazy. But anyway, let's talk about what's going on. And Heroes of the Storm, they got some new skins and stuff. But that game is still weirdly quiet and strange and a funky place. Uh, I disagree. Look. The have, you, have you seen the PTR? Yes. But here's the thing. That's all stuff they were already working on. I There's a messaging problem right now. And they're not out in front of it. And it makes me super nervous. And they just keep all I keep hearing from that team is, well, here's some stuff we already had in the pipeline because we knew at the before the announcement they were like a year out on everything on their plans. Uh, so here's stuff we had in the pipeline. Um, and then the only other announcements we get is some tweet from somebody, yeah, I'm leaving the team, going somewhere else. Thanks everybody, thanks for all the fish, and they go. I I think it's weird. I'm nervous. I'm nervous about the future of heroes. I just am, and it bums me out. I don't want to. I, I don't. I don't think you're wrong. Uh, by any means. I mean, look, with everything that has happened, um, I mean, I'm with you. I, I still go back to that Jalen Brack letter is one of the worst things I've ever seen come out of Blizzard. Yeah. Uh, and I'm still not on board for the new leadership because of that. Yeah. Uh, it really kind of felt like Heroes was a, a bit of a sacrificial lamb for the stakeholders. Yep. They put it on an altar, set it aflame. And <laughs> ate the yeah. results. The thing is, though, if you're playing the game, yeah. If you're in, and you're queuing up, and you're playing games, and you're not a grandmaster player, yeah, I don't think you're noticing this. Yeah, maybe. If you don't keep up with out of the game announcements, if you don't follow developers on on Twitter, it, it's not really any different. We've had new heroes. We're still getting balance updates. We're seeing two reworks come next week to Abatha and a Anna. I mean, yeah, it's in the it was in the pipeline already, but that's how the the team has always worked. And and yes, the slowdown is coming. Yeah. There's no way 
with removing this many people from the team that they're going to be able to keep up the pace that they had before. But they even told us, I mean, before the Jalen Brack letter even came out, they yeah. told us that things were going to slow down, that they weren't going to be. I mean, we had a slowdown last year. They right. went from a hero basically every four weeks to every couple of months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and and don't get me wrong. Like this week's skin for uh, the one that was announced for Deckard Kane, uh, Deckard Payne. Deckard Payne is the greatest thing yeah. the game's ever seen. It's incredible. He's, he's got a box of fiber cereal in his backpack. <laughs> it's he keeps wonderful. eating it. And he's also got his. So his instead of his big club, his staff. It's a. It's like a 50 millimeter freaking sniper rifle looking gun that he holds in the same way. So the, the barrel is in the dirt and the butt is up here of the gun. He still just whacks his enemies with it. So he never shoots the damn thing. But I it's love it. just great. It's a very cool skin. It's um, so goofy. Yeah. I'll give him that. It's yeah. pretty it's pretty awesome. Also, there are possible Anduin leaks. Um, there's some saying that looked fake, and I say I don't know. It looks about right to me. It looks like an alternate skin for Anduin to yeah, me. I think Anduin... And of course he's coming. And then that sword that he's reaching back to grab looks like Charlemagne. It's Charlemagne. Or, and it's, it's hanging there. And this, yeah, there's the ball thing. I can kind of see it. And there's like the way the two connect. There's nothing wrong with that. His dad's got one. He's got one. It's the Nexus. Anything's possible. Yeah. Except so, Varian's just straight up cooler than Anduin. So I'm not particularly hyped about this. But yeah. Yeah, we'll he's, he's, I, a, he's a they, They've proved me wrong before. Yeah. Uh, not, not the biggest Lucio fan in the world. I love playing Lucia. Oh, he's so. great in Heroes. He's my, he's my, well, he's not, my, I won't say he's my favorite hero. That still belongs with Stukov, but I think he's a lot of fun. I like him a lot. In fact, he might yeah. be my second favorite hero or healer in the game. Such a fun kit. Such he's, a freaking fun kit. Yeah, he's really good. It seems on at first like he might not be. Like it might just be floating around with your team and keep him healed. And that's part of it. But it's, I don't know. There's something else going on with him. He's really good. Uh, Tespa Collegiate uh, Heroes Esports is launching a collegiate level Heroes uh, tournament thing and so if you're missing heroes of the dorm i got good news for you this is basically that tespa tespa's keeping it alive that's right uh hearthstone nerfs are live you talked about these last week nerfs are out how does it feel having a bunch of nerfs in your face uh it's still kind of stabilizing at first it was kind of looking like it wasn't doing much to shake things up other than just making hunters the best class in the game um but since then a new secret paladin has like risen to the top uh, Secret Odd Mage is really good. Odd Paladin sadly hasn't gone anywhere, mm -hmm. despite despite uh, the changes. Um, but it's 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 in flux. It, uh, I'll tell you one thing. I, I believe we're going to be covering Combo Priest on Anger Chicken this upcoming Tuesday. That deck is looking real good right now. Nice. Speaking of Anduin, mm -mm. yeah, or Taranda if you're uh, oh, that's if true. you have the better priest Dude. portrait. <laughs> I assume you do. You don't have him. You don't got the little boy. Boy King isn't in there, right? I do not care for Endowin. No, I, I know I you're not. not a fan. I think he's all right. He, he I, got... uh, I would like to impeach the current leader of the of the alliance. <laughs> President Stormwind? Like to, uh, yeah, yeah. I would I would like uh, impeachment of Endowin and the, in, uh, the instatement of Taranda as queen of the alliance. Yeah. Well, except now she's all weirdly uh, over... What would she do? She got into a puddle and got a bunch of arcane bullshit happened. What happened uh, there? She became a badass, like dark moon super saiyan of the night elves. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happened. She Scott. can't be. She can't be Stormwind president now because she's got <laughs> too volatile. She'll like sit down and go, Hurt, and the whole place will be leveled or something will happen. She's too powerful now. <laughs> she can't do it. I know she's not getting my vote. All right, uh, what else here? You got your uh, uh, oh Paris. That Paris map still on the PTR for Overwatch. It's out soon. I've been dipping my toe back in there, although it's I guess I didn't this week. But uh, they also signed a deal with Coke. Coca-Cola is now the official non-alcoholic beverage of Overwatch and Overwatch League. Do they have an official alcoholic beverage? That was the first question that popped into my head. And I read about 10 articles that were talking about this and none of them expanded on that line of non-alcoholic, that's so. a that that was in the that was in the announcement. They used the term the, the official non-alcoholic beverage. Yeah, of Overwatch? it was quoted from Blizzard people. I guess they want to make sure that the world knows that they're not telling their kids to come play this game associated with getting them drunk or something weird. You know, like I, I'm sure that's what this lang careful language is. But it does make me go, okay, well then, what's the official what's the official uh, alcoholic drink? And I I don't know. So it's the official gain a bunch of weight drink. Yeah. Of <laughs> there you go. It's uh, I love Coke. Coke is my soda of choice. Oh, Coke's great. Uh, There's nothing wrong with Coke. But 
I'm kind of a Pepsi guy sometimes, though. I have to admit. Occasionally. I don't even know why I bring that up. Like, Coke is ever going to sponsor anything I do. Like... No, they don't care. But. No, they will when you make your weird chess turn turn based Dota game in the future that you coax right behind you there, buddy. <laughs> You'll have a Coke themed uh, map yeah. and everyone will be wearing Coke t shirts. Uh, it'll be great. L- l- listen, if uh, if um if Coke or uh, Balls Energy Drinks want to sponsor me, I will just take free cases uh, for life. Please I've never heard of you. Balls. Is Balls good? It's B A W L S. It was like all the rage in the uh, mid 2000s. Let me take a look here. Balls Energy Drink. Energy. Not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored. Garena, Garana, ultra caffeinated soda. Yeah, you have to get the original one. They have all these weird flavors now. F that noise. Get the original one. Okay, so you're not into that. Let's see. They first started in 1996. That sounds right. Um, and you have to get it in the glass bottle. The can doesn't taste the same. Ten ounces. Let's see. Boy, this you've got been, a lot of you have a lot of caveats for this. <laughs> has to be the original flavor and has to be in a glass bottle. It's that simple, Scott. Okay. Let's see. Um, so which one? Is the, okay, there's the original. It's a flagship concoction of the Balls family. Balls gu- Guarana, or however you say it, original bottles have 64 milligrams of caffeine per 10 ounces. That's more than coffee by a sh- shot, isn't it? I think so. Or no, is coffee like 83 per cup? I, I don't know my milligrams of caffeine off the top of my head. <laughs> this is the, what's the one time we're super into... Oh, wait, no, no here we go. Okay, uh, the original is also available in 16-ounce cans, contain 102 milligrams of caffeine in the cans. Okay, that's more than coffee. All right, somebody, somebody out there with, with Scott's TMS P.O. box for weird food, please send Scott a bottle of Balls Energy. I'll do it. I'll do it. I don't have a problem. I just, I mean, the name alone, who doesn't want to put balls in their mouth? <laughs> I mean, that's why we started buying it in high school, because it was funny, and then we realized it's also delicious. Sure. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, many right. many nights of Halo spent drinking balls. Oh, really? You would it would fuel your Halo nights. Interesting. Mm-hmm. You almost need something for Halo to get you going to get you through it. Uh, Diablo is Diablo, but I do want to make a a I don't know ancillary point about Diablo this particular season. It seems like more people are playing six, uh, season sixteen around me, my friends, my uh, people I follow on on uh, various social media platforms who play a lot of games and are also Blizzard fans like me. A lot of people in there. In fact, Bo is like Greater Rift level 98 at the moment. I, I like to think, Scott, yeah. that this is all untrue, that this is a fabricated <laughs> lie that you're putting out into the universe to get more people playing Diablo 3 so that you have folks to play with. Well, that might be part of it. But I also play that game a lot. <laughs> uh, I'm also playing Season 16 at a much slower pace than he is, obviously. But uh, And I also spend a lot more time with my mage than I do my new character who's the seasonal but I really think that that's just what that game exists for it's there for when the itch happens if the itch happens you go and you scratch that itch real hard and then you back off for a chunk of time skip a season don't even look at it and then you come back again and you come back and you like it and you scratch the itch again it is like a remedy for what ails you and I'm glad it exists in that form because until we get whatever the hell 4 is and this freaking mobile BS blows over like it's all we got, man. And nobody makes a game that plays as well as it does. And don't send me your emails about Path of Exile, which I love and admire. But Path of Exile doesn't play as good as it is, should. That game is huge. It's got amazing content, incredible gameplay enhancements. Path of Exile is an amazing success, and I wish them nothing but huge success with that game continuing because they deserve it. They love their fan base. They give them what they want. But it plays clunky and janky. It just freaking does. If the moment-to-moment in PoE played like Diablo 3, like, I mean, the way it plays, minute, second to second, I know I bring this up a lot, I'm saying it again, I would be in Path of Exile 24 hours a day. That's all I would want to do. But it doesn't, and so I don't. All right. Uh, I don't know why I had to make that point, but I felt like I did. Let's uh, let's be done with that. <laughs> what are we doing now? Oh, yeah, look at this. We got this. Hear ye, hear ye. Why, it's the town crier. <laughs> All right, the familiar sounds of my then six-year-old son saying, uh, making a laugh. It means it's time for town crier. We take your emails here on the show. They, yeah, that's right. Not so weird. It's not such a strange thing. We've been doing it since the beginning. And we have one right here from, let's see, name is Brodus. Oh, no, Broadus. he says. He gives me a pronunciation table thereafter. Broadus wrote in and said, Dear Instance Crew, some friends and I were talking about getting Anthem and listening to your boop comments about, well, there are 20 ways to buy the game. 
Uh, I realized that you were exaggerating. It was a little confusing when I went to buy the game. Or that I wasn't exaggerating. No, sorry. While you were exaggerating, it was a little confusing when I went to buy the game. There you go. Uh, there ended up being four ways to get it that I think I got right. Number one, standard buy. That's an easy one. Number two, deluxe buy, which is extra stuff like a WoW Digital Collector's Edition, he says. Uh, low level sub. I think this was an option, but I don't know what the other options are to get the uh, subscription. Premier EA origin, origin subscription. This actually looked interesting as it gave you access to a slew of other current and previous games. And previous and by previous, he means a couple of years, not just the 80s stuff or not the 80s stuff. Um, what I wanted to ask you guys are, what are the chances of Blizzard doing something like a premier service? What I would love to see is a sub that would cost like 5 to $10 uh, or more per six months or something. Uh, and give you access to all the Heroes of the Storm heroes and skins, 20 packs of season for Hearthstone, and here's what gets interesting. Access to Diablo 4 at launch if you're subscribed, and if you play the game, have a diminishing charge for you to unsub, i.e. at launch you are subbed up and get it and play it after the first time uh, you play D4 at a, uh, and a counter starts. This is where it gets complicated. Uh, this can either be uh, time played or time after first launch, and as long as you are subbed up for the next 6, 12, 18 months, uh, you get to keep the game if you leave the subscription. In other words, you know, play it long enough during your sub. Now you can just keep Diablo 4. He says, I could see this working for a number of games moving forward, including Classic WoW, uh, Warcraft 3, Redux, and uh, other games. Please discuss, and thanks for all the great podcasts brought us. All right. A slightly convoluted set of circumstances there, but I think I understand his point. Do you? Yeah, this is very detailed. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think Blizzard ever says, here's a subscription Blizzard package and includes all this stuff? Because really, they, they don't have the EA option, which is, here's a here's Madden, here's FIFA, here's Anthem, here's this, here's that. Plus, here are some third-party games, because they do have those over there on Origin, um, Steam-like stuff. And so here's some of that as well, and that's all part of this package. Uh, Blizzard doesn't have that. They have... And in theory, they won't have even Destiny to play with in this regard soon. But they have what games they have, plus maybe an Activision or two. It's more like Activision would do this, not Blizzard. And the Blizzard games might be included in it. But what do you what do you think? I, I mean, as as long as <laughs> as long as selling things like mounts in the store, subscriptions, individual card packs are continuing to be profitable, I don't see this ever happening. Yeah, I don't either. Like, why why would you? give such an ex i mean what what uh what brought us explains here is 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 pretty high value for for what a lot of us are already ponying up a lot more money for yeah in blizzard games um also i mean like i kind of get what what brought us is getting at here like you have like you have the origin access thing which is what i ended up doing so i could get into all the early anthem things mm -hmm. Um, which gives you access to games. It's, it's you know it's a lot like Xbox Game Pass. It gives you access to all these Microsoft games and other select kind of Xbox titles. I just don't see it happening. Yeah. For for Activision Blizzard, at least not right now. I can see it making sense down the road when there's maybe more Activision games on here and maybe more Blizzard games on yeah. here. Yeah. But but right now, uh, there's just not enough games. Yeah, you got to keep I, the, you got to keep in mind it's not happening at the publisher level with Blizzard even though they've got a number of games in the works. They're different from EA and Activision in that they make their handful of games. They've got maybe more on the way, but it's not it's not like EA. EA's not developing those games. They're publishing all of them. And they may own the studios who are developing them, but they're still a, a publisher. Activision is more of the of the better comparison and I don't know that Activision has enough to do this yet. They don't have the breadth that EA does. And you may say EA's breadth of content isn't great. Well, okay. But they've got enough of it to make this make sense, especially on PC. They have a whole different program on console. Uh, the Origins uh, subscription thing is, uh, or not Origin, but the EA yeah, Access and, thing. Yeah, and this month it just it just got a lot bigger because we, we got Apex Legends and we're about to get Anthem. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's how I'm going to probably get Anthem is the subscription thing. I think that's Although a Apex good. Legends, you don't even need the subscription. No, right? it's just you free. Just, you yeah. can just play that thing. And you can connect. Here's the weird bit. You can connect your your um, uh, freaking uh, Steam account and bring all your friends over. So that I saw that. Yeah. I, I was I was having to add some people because Kyle and I I uh, played some Apex Legends the other day, and yeah. I, I was in there. Und I never pay any attention to Origin, and I'm in there. I'm like, oh, 
hey, I can, I can link Steam. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Well, and the chat brought up a good point. Um, remember when there was an option from Blizzard to pay? This is back in 2012, but or I guess it was 2012's BlizzCon or 2011's BlizzCon. I don't remember when they announced it, but if you paid for a year of World of Warcraft subscription ahead of time, you got Diablo 3 for free. Or that just, you know, that came with it. And I'd kind of forgotten they did that. But yeah, they did do that before. So it's not like they haven't been creative in the past about how they do this stuff, how they price things, how they, you know, come up with ways to cross-promote each other's games. But if you're talking yeah, about... Yeah, they're, they're baking Classic into your WoW subscription too. Yeah, and that's just the easier thing for them to do. I'm a little surprised they're not charging extra for it, to be honest. The Terps were sure they were going to charge. But the fact that they're just... I, it in there. I, was, I remember I was there waiting to get the Hillary's hotel uh, debate whether or not it was going to have an additional price tag. Yeah, he was sure of it. He's like, four ninety nine, it'll happen. And I'm like, no, I don't know, man. And then it didn't. And so, anyway, bottom line, will they ever do a subscription? Possibly. Now, it's hard to see it. I'm with Garrett. I don't actually, I can't see it happening in the near future. I think. In the near, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, to me, this ties into the, the, the conversation around all of the, the hiccups with Activision Blizzard in the last half a year is yeah. I, I think the pressure coming down from Activision is because Blizzard doesn't have enough games. Right. right, right, I right. Mean, it, it, and I mean, honestly, Activision doesn't have enough games. Yeah. I mean, how long are you going to keep milking a uh, freaking call of duty? Yeah. I mean, and destiny didn't do what they needed to. And now that's leaving. Yeah. It's gone. So I mean, yeah, they're in a weird, this is a weird time for Activision. Otherwise, you know, they don't have their Tony Hawks of, of your, they don't have, Oh gosh! They oh all, man, it's they been all, a long time. They have all kinds of cool Activision properties at some point, but all that stuff, you know, uh, not Rock Band, but a Guitar Hero, is no longer what it is. Like they don't have anything to milk anymore. And Call of Duty, still popular, still sells millions of copies, but it's not. It's it's now you know we're peaked, we're done, we're there, and uh, you know they have their answer to Battle Royale, but it's, there, there's a lot of concern or issues about how they've been handling that post launch, and then also what the future plans are like for a yearly release of Call of Duty these games are services you can't just suddenly say hey all that time you spent in blackout guess what there's a whole new one so just drop that and play this new one like it's gonna get weird for them so i don't know what activision does activision's in a strange place and blizzard as that's that's the one thing all this criticism about blizzard everybody wants to blame it on activision and i think that in in a way they're right and by, uh, this is kind of hard to explain. I'm not going to be very nuanced about it. But Activision's current place in the market is is a little tenuous and loose. And it's a little, I think, scary for them because they don't have a big future prospect kind of stuff. They're, going, they're, they're heading into EA territory, whereas EA might finally be coming out of their shell a little bit after some, some bad stuff. So Blizzard just can't help but be attached to that, right? Like they have to go along with it. They have to adjust to help soften that blow. Like it's com it's more complicated than just they're an evil corporation who who's dragging Blizzard down with them. It's much more complicated than that, I think. But it's going to get weird before it gets better for Activision, I think. So we'll see. Uh, that's it for the email. Hey, you want to send one in? You can. The instance at gmail dot com. That's the address. We're happy to receive them. So send them, and we'll read them right here on the show. Before we leave, I know a lot of people know this. But you all should be checking out amove.tv because there's lots of rad content from Garrett's side of the of the fence happening over there, uh, which includes a lot of Blizzard stuff as well. Garrett, what's going on this week that you'd like people to know about? Well, as I mentioned at the top of the show, Kyle and I have a new YouTube channel where we're doing general gaming videos. And if you want to hear about Anthem, if you want to hear about Auto Chess, and I think this Monday there might be an Apex Legends video going up. Ooh. Uh, go over to youtube.com slash Garrett and Kyle. It's fun. Two R's to, and two T's and Garrett. It's fun and, to watch. Uh, subscribe. Uh, yes. Yeah, so it's fun to watch Garrett or, uh, uh, sorry, Kyle play Battle Royale games because he's not really into it. <laughs> so yeah. hearing him talk about it is, is, has been fun. It's, uh, it's pretty clinical. Yeah. <laughs> when he yeah. talks about it. He's like, I can see how it's good in this way and that and the other. And at the end of it, I'm just like, so you didn't like it. Yeah, it's just kind of his, you know, when he's <laughs> being yeah, clinical gonna, about it, he doesn't we're love gonna do it. a rundown. Um, we're, we're planning a rundown video, kind of a beginner's guide to it. And, uh, I'm, you know, I've been working on the notes on and off and it's looking a lot like an episode of Into the, Into the Nexus because it's hero based and you know, they've got these kits and ultimates and Q abilities. And mm -hmm. I mean, really, it's just Overwatch, the, the, the Battle Royale. In a lot of ways, also, it is. Yeah. And it's also I uh, the ping system is just this awesome, robust um system of of communication in the game that i wish more 
of a thousand other game types had. It's really good. Like how you can identify loot that, that you're not going to pick up and let your team know where enemies are at. It's intuitive, adaptive. Uh, it's a, it's actually kind of incredible. It's like mobile like in its uh, and it's uh, it's quality. Well, hero so. heroes like in the way its pings work. Not yeah. every MOBA has a has a good ping system. That's true. It's really strong. So anyway, if you haven't tried Apex Legends, try the fun game that's happening with the worst name ever. Give it a shot. Tell us what you think. All right. And no, the show won't become an Apex Legends podcast. Don't worry yourselves. We always get emails about this. We bring up any other game. Oh, is the instance going to be all man Apex Legends? No, it's not. It won't be. But it will be about World of Warcraft and Blizzard. Hey, uh, don't, for, uh, don't forget, speaking of Kyle, he's also on my D&D team that we uh, play with every Saturday in a little show we call There Will Be Dungeons at therewillbedungeons.com. I never really pimp it on the show, but I feel like I should today. So do check it out. Uh, it's a fantastic campaign with great characters. There's uh, four of us plus our DM, Bo Schwartz, who is killing it in that role. And we have a total blast every Saturday at 3 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, it goes for three hours, and it's great fun live. You can also catch it on a podcast feed or YouTube archive if that's more at your speed. I think that is going to do it today for The Instance. The Instance.net is our webpage. You can find us online on the Twitters, at Instance Show, at Scott Johnson, at Garrett Art, and more shows just like this at frogpants.com. That's going to do it for us, for me, for Garrett, and for the rest of you. We'll see you next time. Have a good weekend. Bye. That was a tight shot.